Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for clicking on the video. I do appreciate you being here. My name is Chris. I run Dark Blue Charters here in Manistee, Michigan. I'll put a link down below in the description if you want to check out the website. But today we're going to be talking about drag upgrades. What you can do to upgrade the drags on your reels. You can do this yourself or you can send it in to my buddy Scott. I'll put a link down below to his uh, email account. And if you want to have those done by him, he will gladly accept them and get them done. He does a great job. Or like I said, you can purchase the upgrades here. We're going to go over that on this website and then into the video itself. Don't skip anything here. This is all crucial information. I'm telling you, watch this thing beginning to end. It'll help you out in the future. But let's Let's take a look here how you can do this. Okay, so there are two ways to get your real drags upgraded. One, do it yourself. The second is to send it to my buddy Scott, who you'll see on this video. He will purchase the drag upgrades, do all the work, send the reels back to you. Of course, charge you accordingly for the upgrades and for the service, but he does an excellent job, and I highly recommend if you're going to choose somebody to do them, Scott is the way to go. He's very meticulous, and he's good at what he does. But... If you're going to do the work yourself, come here to Tuna's Real Troubles, tunasrealtroubles.com. I'll put a link down below. They are no longer accepting reels at their shop for upgrades, if I understand correctly. They're asking that all contact and information correspondence be done through email. That email is right down here, andycopenhaver at hotmail.com. But like I said, I don't think they're accepting any reels right now for service. But you can purchase all the upgrade, uh, upgraded components right here on their shop. So if you want to click through here, feel free. They have schematics uh, for all the reels out there. Their online store, the reel parts, the submission form, uh, the services that they are doing right now. Like I said, that information is all right here on this website. One word of caution, this website takes a few, mom few moments to load. So if you click on something... Give it a half minute or longer and it will pop up for you. But let's go to the online store. Another link right here. Gets us to the store and you can see they have everything for Akuma, Daiwa, Shimano, all the handles you want. Alba Garcia, Cabela's, Pen, you, you name it, it's here. Grease lubricant, ball bearings, it is all right here. For today's video, we're going to be working on an Akuma Convector 55 LS this is a non-line counter, but rest assured in a couple of weeks, we'll have another video out showing you how to do the maintenance on a line counter reel. There are some slight differences there, but today we're doing an Akuma line counter, or non-line counter rather, Convector 55 LS. So we're going to jump into here, go down to Star Drag line counter reels. Oh, my fault there, Star Drag. Then we're going to go down here to the Convector cv series and then we're going to go down to if i can get this right the 55 ls is right there so i guess the question is should i upgrade my drags and according to everybody i've talked to scott included the only reel out there that you don't have to is the daiwa saltist those have the best possible drags on them out of the factory but for every other reel out there Scott says that these drags are going to be a definite upgrade and a definite improvement to your reels. So here we are on the CV55 LS page. Everything you could want to order is right here. Let me say this, if you're a saltwater angler, and I do know that there are saltwater anglers out there that watch these videos, this is the grease you're going to want for saltwater applications. The Shimano A, uh, the Shimano A drag GRC grease. For freshwater, it's the uh, Almaplex uh, by Lubrication Engineers. That's what you're going to want for freshwater. If you are doing a ton of reels, a large quantity, Scott highly recommends you grab one of these buffing wheels for helping on the cleaning process. Then everything else you can want is down here. All the parts, the power handles, everything is down here. But we're going to be focusing right now on the drag washer upgrades. And that is what you're going to get right there for drag washer upgrades for $14.83. And that's about status quo on price for all your drag upgrades. Uh, not, not too much to do a nice upgrade for your reel. 15 bucks a reel, I'd say it's a definite uh, worthwhile investment. This is what's nice about this website, though. 
If you get lost at any time, I highly recommend you coming back and watching this video. And let me say this, watch this video start to finish. There are a lot of little things in there that are going to be easy to miss and could really, really mess up your day if you don't catch them. This video is going to cover all of that. But you can also come here and look at these photographs. These are done in the chronological order, in a step-by-step -step order. So that's the order you're going to want your drags to be... Uh, replaced in the reel and it's going to go it's going to go step by step by step by step left to right showing you how to do this in the correct process or in the correct order rather so let's just get into this you're going to enjoy this everybody so like i said i'm down here at dream weaver with captain scott argot singer anybody that's watched this channel for any length of time knows this guy scott's gonna run us through a drag upgrade on one of my 10 colors off my boat this is on an akuma convector 55 l this thing has been oh i've had this about five years and it's had some hard use so this is a great candidate Mm -hmm. to uh, to see what uh, we can do to make this thing a little bit better so it'll be 10 times smoother i can tell you that <laughs> i'm glad to hear that so <laughs> let's jump right into it All scott right. what are we doing first things first there's a little screw right here you have to take this off to get this piece here off this is the first step so you just take your screwdriver they unscrew really easy nothing on these reels are tight everything is is loose for a reason you don't want to over tighten any of these things when you put them back together second step that's got a flat side i just use a regular like this is actually the was actually loose yeah it was actually that, looser than i've taken those off before to extend my uh, handles yep and i found that those things are typically almost always loose yes yeah there's a little plastic washer right here right there gotcha you can just pull it right what kind of tools are we going to be using today, Scott? Just so people have an idea. All you really need is one screwdriver, and that's kind of like the, like a number one, number one or a number two Phillips. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I think you actually call this one a number three, but I don't think that's actually what it is. Um, this one, just in case, like sometimes, um, and I'll show you here in a second. Now this part right here comes right off. That just spins right off. And that's actually your drag. Okay. Your clicker and everything like that is right here. That's your clicker. On Interesting. The yeah. And it's got three or two spring washers. Just try to pull them all off together. Sometimes you can't. It's coming right off that same spot where the, your, uh, the handle came off. Yep. Okay. So once you get those off, just keep them right in a nice stack. Okay. There's a plastic washer, your star washer, and then two of the spring washers. So stack them up the way they came off. Yep. yep. And then this is all ready to take apart now. Okay. Now I still have line on there, obviously. My 10 yep. color's still on there. Does that need to be removed? It does not. You won't even you won't even move it at all. Okay. It's just going to stay right there, and I'll show you guys that, too. Now, one thing I'm going to throw out, though, real quick for everybody to remember, do not let your line go past your line guide. Right, because it will get out of time. Yeah, it'll get out of time. And if you ever wonder why you're letting your line out and the, the line guide's on one side and the line's going on <laughs> on the other side, that is the reason why. Yep. So make sure to anchor it's that usually down. a lot of times it's this worm gear right yep. here that either is wore out or whatever. And there's a way to retime it, but uh, we're not gonna go over that today. Not today. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure how to do it yet. I've done I'm it working a, on it. <laughs> I've done it a couple times. It's not really easy. So your first screws are these ones right here. 
they're just a small small Phillips yep but they hold on the bottom part of the piece Next, you can go ahead and take off all these ones. If you notice, these top two are longer, and that's what threads into this piece right here and helps to hold these pieces on. Both sides have it. If you ever have to redo a clicker, that's right here. It's on this side, you take it apart the same way. I would recommend for people like me that tend to lose things, <laughs> get yourself a little cup or something to put your yep. put your uh, screws and things in because otherwise, if you're like me, you're going to be looking for a half an hour <laughs> for the one that you can't find. And believe you me, I've lost enough of these things. <laughs> it, it is a pain to find them once you lost yes, them. Yes, it is. So this usually comes off. Pretty easy, but it's not. So Older reel. just there she pull goes. that right off. You know, I always put my thumb right on the spool to make sure it doesn't move. See, everything's right there. The line hasn't moved, anything right like that. Because otherwise, if your thumb wasn't there, that whole thing would fall right out. Yep, the whole spool and everything will slide right out with it. Right. And this is what you're left with, is right here. So this so is... So first the, thing you do... This is the meat and potatoes of it right here. Yep. Now this is hooked to this piece right here. That's your cranking arm. And if you try to do it... It just spins. You can hear it. So what I use, I just use a little pair of needle nose. There's a flat piece on both sides of the reel. You can use your open end wrench if you want to, or you can use this. They're not tight. And all you do, yeah, they're just, they're not tight at all, guys. And I always put my screws together for my, my plate right here. There's four of them. This is your last screw that comes out, guys. And this screw, do not lose it. This thing is a bear if you ever do drop it to find. So that came right off that bottom plate. Yep. Every level wind reel so far that I've encountered is all the same on the inside. All the parts is gonna be exactly the same. Okay. So this is, this is for that piece there. Take out your springs, because you don't want to lose your springs. All right. Well, this is ready to come out. Just watch this right here, guys. Don't want to lose that either. That's what holds everything. Is that little, just a little retaining piece? Yep. Huh? It's just a washer oh, I see. and a little brass okay. piece that you do not want to lose because that's what makes this thing spin. If it doesn't spin, you got problems. Well, I would say so. So then all you do is just tip it upside down. And that is and it. that's it. So this is where you start, guys, with the drags, is right here. What I always do is just kind of tilt it towards me. You don't need your screwdrivers for any of this. This is what's called a wet drag. If everybody you know, knows the difference between a wet and a dry drag, this is what they call a felt drag it's real pliable moves around but feels it's like actually got a lot like, of a lot like of grease paper. on it right i mean it's it's pretty bad but best thing to do is take them off in order you know you're going to use them so you got that one goes there like that pull that piece off and then there's the last one right there. And that just comes right off. Right. So that's a drag system right there, guys. That's the stock drag system. That's the stock drag system. Now, which components are we going to be upgrading here, Scott? We're going to be upgrading these components right here. The black belts. Yep. Okay.
All right, guys. So you can't, you can't over clean them. You cannot. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Especially these parts right here. That's one thing, you know, that you always stress is to make sure it is nice and clean. It's going to be like a brand new reel. It is. All right. So when, the, when you take these out of the package, they're not in any particular order. You just kind of match them up where they go. So that's a smaller one there than these ones. See the different sizes. So you know all three of these go inside of that. And this one goes right there in this one. So that was the first one to the far left. You just made yep. it straight up. Okay. Yep. This one has the big hole in it. That's this one. It's gotta be the next one. Okay. Here's a difference between these drags too, guys. This is why these drags are so much, you get more adjustment out of it see the more surface area you have with this drag versus this drag. You know, the hole is much, much smaller yep. on the upgrade. Yep. And that's just all more drag that you have. Absolutely. More, you know. So this one just sets right in there. Got it. Just like that. Pretty simple. And this is where I put them back together. I put them just like that. This washer goes over the top. It goes fiber. Washer, fiber, washer, fiber, washer. Understood. So in your next one, those are those ones. Matched up. So fiber. Yep. Washer. And this one, on these ones, they do have a little bit of a down angle on them, and that's what you go down with. They have just a little bit. On the 45s, you can see it a lot better than you can on these. Can you hold that over the whiteboard just yeah. so you can see it a little better? Gotcha. Okay. But all you do is just put that right in there. And that just locks, right, that just the, locks it right in. Right under the teeth. Yep. yep. And this is your last one. Goes over the top of that. And you are upgraded. And that is upgraded. Now you're ready to put it back into the reel. This is where I take the time. I use an acid brush, a little bit of grease. And I always just put it right on the teeth. Got it. You just you don't want to over grease it, guys. You just just put a nice light film onto it, and this is ready to go back. Make sure you wipe your fingers off. It's ready to go back into your piece here. So the easiest way to do this, because you have to make sure these stay together. You can't just drop it in like this because everything will come apart. And those pieces, that one washer right there has to stay in those grooves. So the easiest way I found to do it is put it up right like this. Make sure that you got your slot lined up. I don't know if you guys can see that. They got flat edges on it. Yep. You can put it right in there like so. Push this down. Just like that. And then just hold it with your... Hold it with your hand. Yep. Flip it over, and it can't go anywhere. Can't go anywhere now. Okay. So the next part that I always put back in, and you're done with these now. You can throw these away and good riddance. <laughs> so the next part you put on is this piece right here. Let me cover around there. So which, what you do... Which piece was that again, Scott? This is your anti-reverse, is what this is. Okay, so that's that little yep. silver lever right So there. that gets held on by this little brass piece right here. So you just put it right into it. Sits right in there, just okay. like that. And it keeps it your reel from twisting backwards. Absolutely. And this is a good time to... Um, be careful if you do set those down. I usually do this ahead of time. But... Um, I always clean these washers and stuff up as well, just to make sure you get all the gunk and make sure there's no dirt or anything else on them. But like I said, you just don't want to lose them. That's the biggest thing. Just make sure you, when you pick it up, everything's sitting right where it's supposed to be. You put this washer back on, just sits right over the top, just like that. And then this will come into play later. But you can see it has flat edges. So you have the flat silver washer with that brass type washer over yep. the top of that. Just the same way it came apart. Yep. And guys, I'll, I'll give you a little recommendation here. When you're taking these apart for the first time, take pictures. Yes. Uh, that's what I do in a lot of stuff when I rebuild things. 
I take pictures of uh, the way the order is and it helps me out tremendously. One thing with um, Tuna's Real Troubles as well is they have very good diagrams on their website for every reel that they do. Beautiful. So you can go on there like they'll, they actually have a thing on putting this thing back together. Okay. If this actually comes off, sometimes it does, but it's, it's easy to put back on guys. Don't panic. It's, it's simple. But the next part you put on is your springs for your, they go just go on those little posts right here. There's two of them. Just like that. All right. So this little gear right here. So just, this is the next piece that goes in. Yep. All right. Just, this is another one. Just put a little bit of grease on there guys. Just, just enough to cover the, the threads. If you're running like salt water reels and stuff like that, use a little bit more grease than you do on these ones. This is the piece that holds that in. That's a good tip, Scott, because these videos are watched. Yes. In a lot of places in the salt water. There is a are... whole nother grease that they use for salt water. I believe it's made by Shimano. Okay. So this thing sits. It's just flat pieces like that. Goes right into there. That's right there. Pick up your piece here. And all it does is just sit in this little hole. Right on these. Right where it came out of. Yep. It's looking like a reel again. Yeah, it's starting to. But this is your, when you flip this, and I'll show you that when we get going on that. All right, your next piece, guys, is this one right here. That just sits over the top. Yeah, and there's a little, there's a little piece right there that your screw goes into, this little tiny screw right here. Same one and like I said, you do not want to lose this screw. If you do, Tuna has all the parts that you guys need. Tuna's Real Repair has all the parts you guys need. So all is not lost if nope. something is lost. If something is lost, <laughs> they got you covered, guys. Beautiful. So this, when it tightens up, it still moves. That's the way it's supposed to be. I always just keep it right in the middle as I do it. All right, guys, now you're ready to put this thing back on. And this, I'm gonna take that little piece, of that little washer out of there. See how it's got a flat side on it? Yep. That sits in that little step right there. All right. And that just keeps the washer from turning. So, remember when I mentioned those little flat pieces on that? If you look on that, it's got flat edges. The first time I did it, guys, I didn't realize that. <laughs> it took me about a half an hour to see it. Because <laughs> I'm like, wow, this thing just sits over the top. No, it doesn't. <laughs> We've all had moments like that. So when you set it on there, you just want to make sure it's pointed in the right direction. And when you get it right, it'll actually snap right on. Sometimes you can turn this, turn your crank just a little bit and it'll fall into place. But if it doesn't sit on there, if it doesn't snap down, you know, you gotta move it. And it can be off just a little bit and a little bit is all it takes. Just like that. Right there. That little click right there. You can see this is actually set in there. Just like that. You can still twist it. If you can't twist it, it's not right. <laughs> That's one of the one of the pieces I or one of the things I know. So you take this washer, make sure and set it back. That's the indented washer. Yep. It's Just got a like that. Right there. Okay. With a flat part against that little step. This is your screw that goes in there. The first one we took out is the first one to go back in. Interesting. Why is that? It, it holds everything together. It holds this this piece here back on with your handle, everything. It holds everything together. Same thing with these. It'll stop. It doesn't have to be super tight. And you always want to make sure she still turns. 
If so it doesn't turn, there's something wrong here. So good rule of thumb is always check to make sure it's yep, free. Always make sure it turns. And don't over tighten your screws. Don't over tighten them. All it is is plastic that it's going into. So your next screw is this one. And you can put these in in any, any order on these ones. It doesn't really matter. Like I say, the biggest thing is don't lose them. <laughs> these have little small heads on them, and they're all stainless. So if you do drop them, don't think you're going to pick them up with a magnet. Your last little screw right here. Let me just start it just a little bit. Sounds like a reel. Yep. And what that little click was that you heard was this little piece setting even more. And you always make sure you go back. It's tight. You're good to go. Make sure before you put the reel back together, guys. Make sure your thing, your, your release, your release works because it sometimes it does not. You get it a little askew. And then, yeah. Yep. And with all these moving parts like this. You always make sure it works. Beautiful. All right, we're ready to put her back together. Let's do it. If you look into this hole right here, you can see where there's a, a slot. Now, if you look onto this, there's the same slot. And I always put just a little bit of, a little dab of grease on here as well. There's a little bearing right here. I just put a little bit of grease on there just to make sure. Just like that. You see that's kind of like an upward angle. So is that. And all you do is you take it. Make sure that everything's lined up where it's supposed to be. There we go. All put back together. Yeah. And what I do is I always start with one of these top ones. And that just helps hold up the top. And then I'll go with one of these small screws for the bottom. Now you can let it go. You don't have to worry about it coming apart. If you try to force this, if you don't have, like if your spool moves, it'll have kind of like a little springiness to it. That means your spool is not rotated in the right direction. So that means take it back apart and reseat. Just all you got to do is just pop this back off a little bit and then spin your spool just a little bit. Okay. And it should go right together. You should not have to force it to go together. Okay. Now this process obviously we're doing it on a Kuma convector, which yep. which is a good reel. Yes. These things are workhorses. I use yep. these things daily for long lines and other applications. I do the same thing. I mean, yep. I've been on a Kuma's Pro Staff for. Seven years, I think. No, and I can't say um, really many bad things about the convector, but would you recommend somebody doing this to a cold water, which is a yes. little higher end? Yep. Still gives you a good every upgrade. one of every one of my Akuma reels are upgraded with these drags. Okay. Um, and especially if you're running the Magnus, this was a that is definitely an upgrade for a Magna. Um, yep. Those reels there, are kind of their low end series. Yep. They're a little bit better than what they used to be, but they're um, and these upgrade or these drag upgrades are 15 bucks or so for the 55s um and they're all about the same price they're all 14.83 okay. is the price of them so if you get an akuma magda and grab a upgrade for 15 dollars, all of a sudden you got a pretty decent reel for a decent amount of money so there's all your screws there and on these 55s they have this one on the bottom And these screws right here, guys, are an odd size. So if you go to screw it in and it doesn't want to go in, don't try to force it. You got the wrong one. Yep. It just doesn't. They can be off just a little bit. They can they can kink one way or the other. I mean, it, it's crazy. But they should just go right into place. Okay. 
And if you notice, guys, this has not moved at all. Now we're ready to put the handle back on, guys. And you always know, start. This is our, our stack of washers that we started with before. So you put these on right here. These are what's known as spring washers. And this is a good time to talk about this too. If you ever are storing your rods and reels, these are what's gonna go out of shape on you. This is what causes your spring and your, your drags to release, to put your pressure on it and everything. They're at a little bit of an of a off kilter angle. When you put them on, see how they're not flat together? That's that's the spring part of it. So that's why you back your drags off yep. when you're storing your when reels. When you're storing your reels or you're not using them, just back them right off. Okay, next step is this one right here. That just threads back on. Just threads right back on. If you don't hear that click, you did something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and this is your, your next piece before the handle. If you look on there, it's actually got one raised edge right there. This one's kind of flattened out a little bit, but it's got one raised edge. Those do have to go up. And that's just what holds your handle away from. That's just another spring that holds your handle away from the, the drag itself, or so your star drag. make sure that it's, it's actually flipped upwards on this, so it's tilting upwards slightly. Yep. And then um, if you guys want to put it on the power handle part of it, if just use, the, I, just I use this first one right here. Just make sure you get on there right. And that's the power handles part of it right there. Gives you, a little, Gives you a little more cranking. And on these are 6.3 to 1 gear ratio, which is fast. I think fast. it's got a 53 inch retrieve on them. I mean, it's crazy fast. Yep. Got your handle on there. There's a clear washer that goes underneath your nut for this. That just goes right over the top like that. And you thread this on. And what I like to do is I like to tighten this down a little bit just to give you a little bit of leeway. And you're gonna see like that spring cannot go past that part of it. See how there's a gap right there? And that spring piece that we put on the top of this is actually holding that up. So it's not gonna go past it, guys. But I always like to tighten it up. That way when you go to tighten your handle up, you're actually tightening it against that. So what I do is I get it finger tight. It's lined up right there, but it needs to go a little bit tighter. So you go to the next little notch right there. And it doesn't take nothing to tighten these. You can sit there and wrench them down, but it's better if you don't. You're not gaining anything. No, you're not gaining nothing. You're actually losing some on your drags. Right. Yeah, that's the way I normally do it. I get a finger tight and then I just tighten it to the next yep. spot for the set screw. Yep. Take your set screw and put that back in back in your little hole right there and that just keeps that nut from twisting so now when you back it off there is nothing there nothing whatsoever you'll have so much more adjustment on here i mean it's crazy just that much i've moved it i mean if you want to try it we can unhook it from this rubber band and you can see how smooth that how is. How silky smooth that is. That is smooth. And I mean, go ahead and hang on to that. Go ahead and tighten that drag wheel. Oh, that is liquid smooth. And huh. it stays like that too. Yeah. I mean, you can really, you have a lot more adjustment on these drag master drags than you do on their stock drags. Make sure you back that back off, and you're ready to go. Uh, Scott, I can't say thank you enough for giving us the uh, tutorial on that. Everybody, if you got something out of this video, make sure to give a thumbs up, especially just to say thank you to Scott. And if you liked what you saw, you want to subscribe, that would help as well. Yeah.